and others. <laughs> this we've got another match of for week one of the PMA LCS. This time Chase Squad versus Team Foreskin. I am Rich Drachi Maddies, and this time I am joined by John Bellowing Bison Christensen. Say hi to the people. Hi. Perfect. And also <laughs> the man, the myth not the Will Torpedo, Will the Torpedo Brooks, but uh, the support legend himself, Matt Baba Booey. I don't, I, bulls. Matt, that's there awesome. we go. There we go. Well, how's, how's it going? It's going good. I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm not Will the Torpedo Brooks, but I'll try my best anyway. I, as you were saying, the support legend, who's actually really bad anyway, but we're in here. The I'm excited for this game. Mad Life incarnated. Oh, man. Anyway, though, so, yeah, on the blue side, we do have the Chase Squad. In the top lane, we've got Guy Fieri, formerly Gnarls Barkley. In the jungle, we've got Elucida. Xanicus Musicus is going to be in the middle lane. Allergic to Milk is the AD carry, and his support is Alistar Moody. And for team number two, we've got Team Foreskin. In the top lane, subbing in for him is going to be Fish Baby Bot. Rocking it in the jungle is going to be Silent Taco. Mid lane is going to be J Rar. Psycho Boy 92 hitting it up in ADC, and also subbing in Fleeing Panda as the support. Actually, a note: Fleeing Panda is actually now their starting support. Their for their former starter, X Metro Falco, I believe. He, from what I heard, he got a new job and didn't actually have time to play. So he he's now on the sub list, and Fleeing Panda is now their support. So yeah, well, he. We'll be seeing a lot of him this season, I guess. But yeah, so they, for anybody who is joining us for the first time, although I'd imagine a lot of people watching are bros that semi-know what's happening. But for the people that are new, I'll just go over this real quick anyway. So how we do champ select here, since not everybody owns every champ, and that can make switching around kind of iffy, we... Here in the custom game lobby, we just do the pick bands here, and then we start up the actual champ select, and everyone just picks the champ they champs they were picked during the lobby pick band phase. So yeah, we peers were about to get into the lobby, and here we go. Do not get that, get that music going. So yeah, if they hopefully they do, yeah, they do keep the same bands in this actual band phase. But we can see first the Zed band obviously targeted at JRAR, along with a Kennen band targeted at Guy Fieri, who I would say he played a pretty good Kennen last night against when he was subbing for Seven Shades of Greg against uh, I don't know team names. Who's Team Six? Fight. Someone help against Cass's shoe shop. <laughs> best, best host NA. So, all right. Well, they are gonna get underway, and should be a Galio band coming out. That is a fairly typical band for both top and mid lane. So we'll be getting into the picks right right about now. Yeah. Guy Fieri is also very good Galio, but he is gonna get the Jarvan top. I assume that is gonna be Tank Jarvan as has been typical in the LCS and quite a bit in solo queue, although I know solo queue people do like to go a bit more towards AD, but you never know. Guy Fieri can pull out maybe the full AD Jarvan. You never know what he's going to do, and it, his lane matchup is going to be against a Jace, and Silent Taco does get the Elise. But <laughs> Elucida going get, to get that Shivana that he loves. Oh my god, he's, he's played so much of this champ in solo queue. I'm, I'm excited to see what, how much work he can do on it. Yeah, and so now we also just have, you know, your standard control mages for the mid lane. And then one thing uh, you're talking about with the Jarvan going tank versus AD, you. you know, AD is very good in solo queue, but, you know, it falls off exactly. super heavily. Yeah. Uh, once people get one or two armor items, you know, he's not going to be as effective. 
Uh, so it is more worth it to go tank in a more competitive setting uh, where you can really communicate with your team and you can make sure that you have the follow-up once you go in. Yep, absolutely. So I go. Yeah, I've, I've played a full AD Jarvan games in solo queue. It's, oh, it's fun, but you get behind even a little bit and you just lose all impact on the game. But we see the bands coming through, but also a Zaya picked up for Psycho Boy now. Zaya is definitely one of the stronger AD carries ever since she was released, actually. And she also, I would say she matches up fairly well against Lucian. I don't know. I, she, Zaya is kind of my go-to pick against that Lucian lane and against the Thresh, too. Mm. Yeah. But, so yeah, looking at it for Chase Squad, you can see that they really built around that Oriana pick, especially with their top and jungler. They have that go in ability where she can put her E on either one of them and they dive in, and that can be easily a five man ult for Oriana, which you can set up then, set up Jarvan's ult if he doesn't go in with it. Yeah, plenty, plenty of ball delivery there on the side of Chase Squad. They do have, they do have a very heavy pick team fight comp going on. And they'll, they'll definitely look to group up for 5v5. Meanwhile, for Team Foreskin, they have a bit more, like, they have a bit more poke, po kind of poke disengage. They have the Jace Shock Blast, the Elise Cocoon, and also also great drone potential from that tally, Talia for JRAR, which is also an interesting thing to note. JRAR is known for his assassin play, but is on this control mage here. How's it looking? Uh, Enchante has now invaded the stream. Oh. This <laughs> Sean. 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 Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> we love you, but we we love uh, we love yeah. Sean, but that's that's awkward. It's uh, okay. It's, all right. it's okay. It happens. It happens. Yep. It happens. But yeah, just waiting for a spectator delay. But in the meantime, you know what we gotta do? Predictions. Baba Booey, who do you think is gonna take this game one? Well, you know, as uh, as I think uh, Bell and Bison was uh, saying earlier, you know. Chase Squad really has that team fight synergy, you know, with the Shamana, Jarman, E, uh, and all with the Oriana ult. Like, I can just devastate a team fight. But uh, it does look like Team Four C, you know, they could go for that split push, you know, maybe pick people off with all that mobility moving it around the map and stuff. I do think, though, that Chase Squad is going to pull it out. I do see how Team Four Skin is going to try to combat this, but. My pick is with Chase Squad for this first game. All right. Bison, what do you think? I'm also going to go with Chase Squad. Um, maybe not super obvious they're going to win, because I think it really does depend on the jungler play here, on which lanes they decide to try and get ahead. Can they counter jungle each other, and how does that go, especially focusing on just like, like I said, that matchup between Elisita and Silent Taco. Uh, both of them are really good junglers and know their map presence and where they need to be and which lanes need to be ahead when. Um, I think whichever one can execute that better will help their team to win. Like I guess I think it'll be Chase Squad. Yeah, I, I will go ahead and also agree. I think this it, this game really is going to, like Bison said, come down to that jungle matchup. I think Lucida, is, he's a very strong jungler and his Shivana, he pretty much goes god mode, power farms, and takes over team fights. And I think he'll be able to do that this game. I mean, that being said, though, I th JRAR does easily have the potential to take over this game once he hits 6. He just ults, ults either top or bottom lane, picks up some kills either for him or his team, and he can definitely snowball a game that way. So, well, we'll see how this is going to go, but we are ticked down to zero in the spectator delay. 
means we are getting into game one versus Chase Squad and the Team Four skins soon. Soon. Let's see if Foreskin what? keeps their promise of only playing Team Cops where they have Foreskins. Oh, true. Let's. This. JRAR did promise this. Hold on. Let me just. I realized I have the wrong teams on the wrong side, so let me just fix that on the stream real quick. <laughs> There we go. And T4S. Boom. We are back in business. Let's let's see. Nope, they have no broken the, they have broken the they've broken the prophecy. Neither team with four skins. I'm 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 disappointed. J J Rar, J Rar, shame on you. On. Okay. Right. Just wait for this. <laughs> wait for the game to catch up. While we sit here and just stare at Summer's Rift, and here we go. <laughs> We are all loaded in. Players are ready to go. That's I uh, once I eh, there. I've there. I've <laughs> figured out my stream controls. Perfect. Yeah. Look. Huh. I. It's, just based off the pings, Team Foreskin might be looking for this invade. This Jace is down. Is down here. They did all ping this one bush. But now, fish baby bot's just gonna just gonna back off. No, he's gonna cancel his back. Although J Squad are, they did place a ward on the Raptor pit for Team Foreskin, and maybe just getting some information. See if Taco starts that camp. I know I've played quite a few games with Alusta and he really favors that Raptor start. But no Yeah, they're now aware of that potential invade. They saw him in the pixel bush. They definitely saw J Rar there. So yeah. J Rar giving it away a little bit. It's okay though. J Rar? Alusta's still in this bush, J Rar hanging around a little bit. Wait, <laughs> they're they're teasing us. They 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 want us to think we're gonna do they're gonna do a level one, but they're really not. Well, speak, speaking of that raptor start, I said Elucida really favors that raptor start, and I've jungled with him in solo queue. That is what he's going for. Does I don't think he got the leash. I, Xanicus might have just thrown a Q over the wall. Give him that little bit of a leash, but with how fast Shivana clears camps, it's fine. She, especially on Raptor, she doesn't really need that leash much. You guys, you guys are on like the same timestamp as me, right? 220, 21, 22. I'm at 23, 24, 25. Okay, well, more or less good. Matt, you good too? Pretty, pretty boring level one so far. Oh, Alistar Moody does land the hook on the Psycho Boy off that level two power spike from the Lucian Thrush. Little bit of damage. Brom throws up his unbreakable. That's the end of that trade. So one just thing to note is that uh, Silent Taco has finished his second buff. Meanwhile, Lucida is you know, more or less in the middle of his. And so it is going to be interesting to see just uh, how these junglers are going to be impacting on the first game. Yeah. Silent Taco looking... is making that yeah. blue side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, gonna, he, we, 
Lucid is pretty low while trying to take the scuttle. Silent Taco is going to land the cocoon. Throws out the spiderling. Is this going to be first blood? Lucid is solo in the shock last night. First blood for fish baby bot. Yeah, so that a corruption and a deal. These will pay off. And that's double buffs over the fish baby. That is massive Ooh, for the Jace. Just endless shock blast poke. This Jarvan is it. not gonna have a fun time. That's yeah, gonna make it a real unfortunate top lane game for Guy Fieri over here. And uh, you know, he's just gonna get bullied down the lane. Yeah, this is maybe like Pulse94's dream right here to have double buffs and just Jace. I think it's his dream in general just to play Jace. Because he's ne it's never gonna happen. Just straight never. <laughs> Oh, Cocoon, oh, Cocoon lands on the Xandicus and he gets destroyed. Knockback coming in. That's a great game for Silent Taco. Picks up a kill for it. Mm, that was near max, not necessarily exact max range Cocoon, but it was pretty long, so the stun was able to last. Oh man, that was just, you know, the wombo combo, chaining the CCs. Oh, it's great. That yeah, Taco, it's only been two we've seen him thrown out, but. Really good accuracy so far on these cocoons. If he can keep hitting those, that's going to be a massive impact they'll have on this game. Yeah, we are seeing really just what I, I pointed out that jungle presence between Elucida and Silent Taco. Silent Taco picking up two early kills from both one for himself and one for his team. I mean, getting that chase ahead against Jarvan is definitely going to help, and then helping get some presence there for Talia in the mid lane will definitely help. Absolutely, and then Natalia can just spread it to the rest of the map. Mm -hmm. Although, we can pretty much immediately see the difference between these two junglers, not only the players, but also the champions. Hansu, or Elucida rather, has doubled the CS of Silent Taco, but Silent Taco has gotten off the sex successful invade and a gank, but as I say that, Elucida is going to come down for this gank, hook landing onto Psycho Boy, and that's a dead Zaya. Kill going over to Elusa. Fling Panda is gonna get out alive. Silent Taco is just here to watch his ADC die. But he's gonna, co gonna cocoon Elusa, bringing out a bush. The shield comes in, and that's gonna be quite a bit of return damage. Elusa flashes forward right as Taco comes down, but he does pick up the kill anyway. And Fling Panda's next flash from both the Thresh and the Lucian, it's gonna go to Allergic to Milk. That's three kills back for. Chase squad. Yeah, and real, Lucian really stepped up there and saved Elucida from dying. I mean, he pushed that. He got that heal off, saved him from at least getting that pickup to even it out. Yeah, I think Taco, I mean, he was there for the counter gank, but as soon as this ADC died, he probably should have just said, this isn't good to himself, this isn't going to work, and just left. But he decided to force something, and that's just, I mean, it's two more kills, and Elucida did pick up two of them, allergic to milk, got one of his own. That's pretty much who you, in in that kind of fight, you really want to cap all those who are ahead, not necessarily the support. I love, love you, Matt, but you don't need kills, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. And, you know, something that we were able to notice, mid lane getting some training done, but things we were able to notice there in that bot lane is that Silent Taco does win the 1v1. It's just, you know, that bot lane, both of them are still there, able to turn it into trade for huge net gains for Chase Squad. Wins a 1v1, maybe not a 1v3, though. Mm -hmm. Not yet. I don't know. If he goes... If he hits 13 and 1, maybe he can 1v3, who knows. Bit of a pipe dream for really anyone, but... Sell back down a little here. Jrar and Zankis both have hit 6. We'll look for a play from Jrar soon. Elusive coming in. Gonna get knocked back by W. Just gonna get lanched out. Those I will talk about saying here misses the cocoon. Gonna get flayed back, but... Chase Squad not gonna go for that. And, you know, big, you know, looking at the farm, you know, there's a big farm discrepancy in mid and in bot lane for both teams. Uh, you know, it seems like JVAR is up by about 30 compared to Xanakis and 34? Yeah, that, yeah, it's 34. Yeah, that is ridiculous for 8 minutes already being up that much in CS. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, we got, you know, Allergic to Milk, he's up. 
you know, 16 to Psycho Boy. Not as much, but, you know, it is a uh, difference that we will have to watch out for later in the game. That, I mean, that is what you want to do on Dissolution. He is such a good lane bully against everyone except Caitlyn, basically. And you have the Zaya that he can, at least I said Zaya is a good pick against Lucian, but in the early levels, she just doesn't have the damage to match up. And if Logic to Milk can keep this up and snowball a little bit, he he's going to turn into a big damage source real fast. Mm -hmm. So, got Silent Tiger. Just clearing out some wards, trying to increase that vision line. But it looks like the Tumblers might end up running into each other. There's gonna be a contest over this blue buff. Jero and Xan- Jero wants- looks like he wants to go on Xanakus. Just gonna poke a little bit, misses most of the Q shots though. But we take the milk dashing on the Psycho Boy, Cutlass comes out. Ultimate does dodge the hook and flashes Boots and gets out of that gank alive. Not gank, gets out of that skirmish alive. And that was actually a very close Q. It almost hit just- if he waited just maybe another half second on it, Psycho Boy would have come down from his ult and it would have been more than likely a dead Zaya in the bottom lane. Oh, j gonna stop the pack from Xanakus and is gonna finish him off with that last Q. Kind of a greedy back from Xanakus and yeah. he's, he's just, he just goes down. And now it looks like we both bot mid being ahead, it looks like he's gonna that Talent Taco's gonna focus at top lane and try and get him going now. Have full pressure across the entire map. And the Talia is also hanging around here. You've, it looks like she wants to get that ult in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that was one of the things you know we were talking about with JR. If he can, you know, take that advantage in the mid lane and if he can put that somewhere else in the map. Uh, and see if he can get any of his other lanes ahead, but it's like they're just going to be taking the Rift Herald from now. Yeah. I mean, Han, uh, Lucida is just farming his cards right now, nowhere close to being able to contest this. He might go for a solo dragon. I've seen him do that quite a bit on Shivana. But right now, just good team going to defeat yeah. that Rift Herald. It is going to go on to JRAR. They'll definitely try to He'll get some pressure with that and he's gonna roam around the hook goes wide. It looks like Elucida is gonna try and solo that dragon. He can test that uh take of uh, Rift Herald. And he does get it. He take Shivana clears the dragon so fast. That's it's Yeah, almost... with her passive it's it's kinda ridiculous. I mean you do extra damage to the dragon and plus each dragon you take gives you bonus magic resistant armor, so the more they let him take any of those, it's going to be harder to fight him later on. And a key thing to note that happened while uh, he was taking that uh, dragon is that mid lane, uh, Xanakus was clearing out a pink ward and he was getting collapsed on by both JVR and Silent Taka, was forced to flash, so his flash is down, so look for a repeat gank or exceeded, uh, exceeded pressure in the mid lane. For the next five or some minutes or so. Absolutely, JRR does quite a bit of damage to Xanakis, just he and the the, um, the one the one Q poke taking off just under half his health. This Talia's already finished the sorcerer. She's she's gonna be scary. So it looks like they are gonna give the blue buff over to JRR. Good. It'll only help him increase the snowball that he has in his lane. Yeah. And imagine the same is gonna happen for Xanakis. Not the snowball, just get that blue buff. I mean, Shivana doesn't have mana. Don't need it. Yeah. Unless Elusida decides to be greedy and take all the blue buffs. We, we've all had that jungler that does that. Some trading going on. Oh, Elusida is gonna flash for the ult onto JRAR. It's gonna pull oh, Alistar Moody flash hooks, but JRAR flashes away. Two flashes burned from Chase Squad just for the flash of JRAR. Not quite worth for Chase Squad. Yeah, 
Alistar Moody had the right idea, but you know, when you're blowing a fight on your jungler as well, it's not gonna be quite as worth it. Though, now both midliners don't have flash, uh, so that's gonna be... I feel like we're gonna get a lot of action in this midliner very soon. Yeah, he wasn't quite in range for flash play. Maybe it would've been better to just save that. Say, hey, we traded jungler flash for midlane flash. Jungler has... In the, has a dash in his alt. JRR doesn't. Maybe just take that flash trade and get away. But JRR is going to summon that Rift Herald in this middle lane. TP is coming in from Guy Fieri to defend the tower. The Rift Herald not not going to take down this tower. Not the greatest use of that objective from JRR. So maybe maybe sure look to find find the pick instead and then use it, but meanwhile Alistar Moody is going to flank the Zai and the Braum, all is going to come out, going to get the root on only the Thresh, Exhaust coming out, onto Allergic to Milk, so Hook connects, that's a dead Zaya, Fleet Panda is going to be next, is he, yep, dash in, double kill for the Lucian, another great skirmish from the bot lane to chase him and now that that Lucian is before that double heal even happened, Lucian was already sitting on his bl full completed Blight of the Rune King. Meanwhile, Zion only has that BF sword uh, top line train. But anyway, Zion is only on a BF sword and a cold field, starting to fall farther and farther behind. Oh, Hook gonna miss onto JRAR. Also, Flea's also gonna miss. miss. Alistar Moody not quite pulling a yellow star, not flashing, missing everything, but does miss those two key skills you kinda wanna hit. Is looking around, does land the hook this time, is gonna play him not quite the right direction, but Elucida is here to clean this up. Shockwave does whiff from Xanakis, but it doesn't matter, Elucida gonna pick up that kill. And I'd actually like to return to that usage of the Rift Hail. You know, you show the Rift Hail and you're, you know, you're almost guaranteed a turret. And that would have been first turret of the game, considering that none of the teams are relatively pushing super hard. But while that fight, while the gank was happening in the mid lane, uh, Allergic Milk was able to get the first tower gold down the bottom lane, and it was solo gold. So he has all of that gold extra himself. He just skips straight over boots, gets a Phantom Dancer. He is going to be ridiculously strong right now, and he is their way to get ahead and win this game. They need yeah. to play through Allergic to Milk. Psycho Boy hasn't even finished this ice Essence Reaper, but speaking of Psycho Boy, he's getting jumped on by Siobhan and the Thresh, and that is a dead Zaya. Just can't do anything about that. Did have his flash up, maybe could have flashed away, but just too much damage. I guess he knew he was just going to die anyway. Yeah, it looks like we'll maybe, yeah, maybe just strayed a little bit too far from the support there. Looks like maybe Braum was headed more towards the Dragon Pit area, and he headed back into late, and they collapsed on him from there. Yeah, I I just went back and I watched it. Uh, Flint Panda was clearing out a pink board, and then, you know, the collapse was just perfect timing, and so there was just no chance. Yeah, great communication from Chase Squad. Say, hey, we the ADC's on his own, let's go collapse. Alistar Moody gonna sweep and find Silent Taco, but he's gonna get cocooned and jumped on. Takes about half his health. Come on, with the top lane. Just, camera taking us all over the map. Guy Fieri's gonna miss his flag and drag. Meantime, Alistar Moody's gonna take a big chunk of damage from the uh, uh, from the Talia, sorry. Does force out the heal from Allergic Milk. Maybe not needed, but that force, with that force heal, he force again going over this dragon. And oh, <laughs> Lucida jumps in, gets the Dragon Steel, is gonna go down for it. The shutdown going to the Zaya, but great Dragon Steel from Lucida. Meanwhile, the guy here he gets knocked into the turret and has to flash out. Not gonna lose out on that trade. Oh man, this. Lucida is having a great game on the Shivana. Up 30 farm. Gets a Dragon Steel, up three kills now on Silent Taco, actually. And it looks like really that Silent Taco is going to be the one to get to be the jungler to watch in this one. And now Elisita's kind of turned around ever since he got that picked up that double kill bot lane, and he's been rolling ever since. Steals the dragon there with his ult. 
turning out to be just overall the evolution of a fed spot on each on their side where you have Talia and Talent Taco on the other. Yeah. So it's nobody knows to watch. Probably no one's that found Team Foreskin, but Guy Fieri gonna jump in, land the Cataclysm onto j -Rar. takes so much damage, but Lucida and Alistar Moody are here. Guy Fieri almost goes down, one more auto from Fish Baby Bot does go down, but Lucida gonna clean up the double kill. And that's two for one over to Chase Squad. Yeah, but to be fair, Team Foreskin did... They did get that tower, but lost an extra kill. Maybe on its own, maybe that's worth. But Chase Squad is looking to push down this top tower now. Is it, will they get it? It's not quite low enough, but Lucid has has finished his jungle item that I forget what it's called. I believe it's blood, uh, blood razor. Blood, blood razor has finished his blood razor. Has the sheen. He's gonna rip through this tower. Let's get it. So, uh, there we go, that's... Now it's not a worth trade for a Team Foreskin. And so, if you want to go back and look at farm disparities, you know, it looks like the top line, uh, looks like that chase is running up about 30 CS. Mid lane, or the mid lane is up by 40 CS, and that is fairly notable, you know, considering it. So it is Atali versus Oriana. Uh, meanwhile, in the bot lane, Lucian's still up by about 25 compared to uh, compared, compared to Psycho Boy on that Zaya. So you know, it's interesting just to see you know where the farm is going to and how that's you know impacting this whole entire game. Absolutely, you're gonna have the solar lanes being played around from T4 skin, the jungler ADC. Chase squad. Still still a pretty even game. Only a 1k gold lead so far for Chase Squad, even with that four kill advantage. Mm. So both both teams gonna start looking to kinda of ARAM a bit. The top laners doing doing a bit of an upside down swap fiddly bopper as Piper would say kind of thing. Yeah. Uh yeah, well, the thing is now is that uh, Chase Squad, they want to group mid because they want to get that last outer tower. Uh, they have both the bottom and the top, uh, and so they want to get that last outer before, you know, they can really start to move into the jungle, start placing wards and pressure advantages. Uh, meanwhile, you know, it's only the bottom tower for Chase Squad that still stands. Got this wave clearing coming out from JRO so far. Hook goes wide, also gets booty, does get knocked back in, and has to flash out. Look, I, I fear he's in a bit of a weird spot. Just casual flag and drag out of there. So, Alstar Moody does did have that ball on him, maybe looking for a uh, hook into the ball delivery from him, but. Hook hits a minion, nothing gonna come of it. Allergic to Milk does throw out that calling. Fleet Panda jumps into the hook. Is gonna throw down that Rom alt. Weaver's wall. Not gonna do anything really, but Xanakis music hits does get knocked back. Flash away from Xanakis. Hook lands, but Xanakis gonna go down to JRAR. Allergic to Milk looking like he wants to threaten this, but <laughs> meanwhile off to the side, Silent Taco. Let's get in the cocoon, but gets jumped on by Elusta. So much damage coming out from the Shivana. Repels up, doesn't have anywhere to go, but the shutdown coming in onto the Shivana from JRAR. That's two kills over to the mid laner. Nice good swing back. Keeper of Team Force getting action all the time. JRAR gonna dodge away from the hook, flashing away on the side of that Lucian. Both teams disengage, but overall two for zero in favor of Team Foreskin, and they've pulled back the gold to dead even. And it all started off with a, you know, kind of a questionable Weaver's wall there, you know, kind of you know, blocking off Psycho Boy from really being able to follow up and chase with the wall being right in front of him. Uh, but everything else, you know, went in Team Foreskin's favor, you know. Xanakis had made it out as Oriana with that with the flash away from JR, but then I think he went back in to try and rearrange his ball for a for a better ultimate, and you know, he just walked right into a tall Q, led right to his death, you know, and then uh Lucida 
just you know going a little too hard you know trying to take their advantage over the enemy jungler and just pressure a little too hard uh didn't know where everyone on the team was yeah but this dragon has respawned this one's a mountain definitely one of the stronger dragons i would personally call it the second strongest after infernal everyone loves an infernal dragon but hot um elucida shivana will be up in time for it they are not gonna, I, I thought they started it for some reason, I'm blind, I don't know why I play this game, or cast it. It's alright, you're a need carry. <laughs> I don't need eyes, I just need a uh, right finger to click, to right click my mouse, and that's it. Yep. Both teams just trying to get position around this pit, Psycho Boy is hovering around mid, and j has gone back, they're just gonna fight for vision, and go back to Vitaline for right now. Hook, gonna land onto the Zaya, gonna leap in, flam, horizontally, flame panda to jump out, throws off his unbreakable, not quite the right direction. Guy Fury does go in for a flag drag, has to flash out, just misengages from all sides. And we're just, we're just gonna, just gonna pretend that little Turn events never happen and go back to Fling Panda getting hooked, but Ebrahim is in the middle of his team, not quite who you want to get the hook on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brom being, you know, the tankiest member on the team, not exactly the person you want to be uh, engaging onto. It's like, <laughs> it's like Blitzcrank hooking in a Galio in the middle of taunting. Oh, or, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> or, or being a smithy and... Uh, Using the Lee Sin kick to do that instead and make a zero man taunt a four man taunt. <laughs> it's okay, even even LCS pros have some questionable plays. <laughs> if you want questionable plays, just look at me. Just go <laughs> go to either Guy Fieri's or J Rose plays on TV. You will see plenty of questionable plays from me. In the meantime, Xanakis gonna get destroyed by J Rose yet again. Actually, a solo kill, even with all his teammates around. They're actually they're looking to go for this Baron, huh? Uh, Lucida is gonna solo out the Dragon, but Team Forskin is gonna start up the Baron. Lucida is on his way. The Baron not quite going well enough. They are gonna have to just back out of it. Yeah, thing to note there, Alusta did not smite the dragon, so he did. He was aware that that was a possibility, so he was running as fast as he could, save the smite to do a potential 50-50 smite steal, uh, and now very smart there, up. trying to get the smith turret, but the weaver's wall actually cuts off his own team. J Road does get hooked. Everyone's gonna pile on top of him. Shut down for Shivana. Clean handle. Looks like he's gonna be next, but so much damage coming from the side. It does pick up the thresh. Allergic to Milk does pick up Fleen Panda though, as throws out that calling. Elusida taken solo, barely lives. Go live through that red buff, but Allergic to Milk is just getting off all this damage. Now, Chase Squad's gonna look for this tower off the back of two kills to one. Allergic to Milk gonna just dash away and not gonna get much. Oh, yeah, that's two, two for one again for Chase Squad. They don't have quite have positioning on this tower. Psycho Boy does have a late player on the Zaya. But Allergic to, Mil <laughs> Allergic to Milk still doesn't have boots. Not even tier 1 boots. He has. Yeah, I was. I was. I was Fork Phantom just Dancer. About to point that out. Either, either the Rapid Fire or the Shiv next. I might be the Rapid Fire. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, he does have a little bit of movement speed coming from Phantom Dancer, so maybe just stop him that enough movement speed for now and doesn't really need to go that fast. It's a double seal, and he has a, has a dash. No, he needs movement speed. Yeah, he has, he has picked up the Rapid Fire Cannon and a Quicksilver Sash, continuing to not pick up boots whatsoever. I mean, not what I would do, but it's, it's working for him this game, so I'm not going to question it too much. Well, let me, uh... I mean, who needs boots to run away when you can just kill him, I guess. Things Cassiopeia says. I mean, it's not like, you know, he's necessarily slow or anything, you know? It's not like he's slugging it down. Oh, j Rare gonna get jumped on, taking so much damage from that Trivana. That's an unstoppable kill for the Lucian. 
Lucida does had completed his Triforce actually a little while ago and just does so much damage. That is basically a full offensive Shivana. But Hook around the side, landing on the Silent Taco. The play comes out a little late, not gonna knock him back. Root missing from Psycho Boy. The team just posturing around this mid lane. A squad looks like they want to get this mid tower off the pick on the Jabar, who is the strongest member of Team Four Skin. Guy Fieri jumping in, Cataclysm onto Fling Panda. Hook in the backside on, lands onto Silent Taco. Great three man shockwave from Xanakis. But no more cleanup. It's going to come out massive root. Xanakis is under towered. All the shields come in, flashes out, stays alive. Just all that chaotic action. Just one more pick over to Chase Squad. They do get the tower and another pick, so they got what they came for. Hell no, allergic to milk. Just dashing into a 1v2. No fear whatsoever. Does so much damage. Going to crit. Gonna crit Silent Taco to death, gets lantern and dashing double kill for the Lucian. Oh, great play from Allergic Milk and the, the Thresh to lantern him in. That's the other two kills, and now J Squad are the ones looking like they want to get this Baron. Yeah, Allergic to Milk is just, yeah, he's popping off this game. Very ridiculous. They're moving to Baron, it is warded, so they will see it on the side of the forest. Line. So yeah, yeah. This is a pretty safe Baron with the jungler down. Both, meantime, in <laughs> bot lane, Guy Fieri just gonna miss the all the damage. Blue team does secure that Baron Nasher. JRAR does get hooked and not able to throw at anything to try to steal. Oops, free. That's a free Baron over a chase squad, and now it's up to them to really push this now 4k gold lead ahead even more. So it is about a 4k gold light at this point. You know, that's something that, you know, that's, I would say that's fairly typical for around 30 minutes. You know, you probably want it to be a little bit greater at this point, but uh, I think uh, Chase Squad's trying to take it slow, make sure that they don't overextend, make sure they do everything right, uh, and have a first good game up on the Rift in the uh, PMA LCS. Absolutely. Oh my god, allergic to milk, still has not bought boots. His uh, his inventory is now full, has bought the infinity, not the infinity edge, has bought the BF sword and the pickaxe looking to go towards that infinity edge, but still no boots. This is, this is an interesting, <laughs> interesting, pretty interesting illusion build to say the least, but again, he's 7-0-4. Not, you know, he's popping off, not gonna question it too much. Yeah, well, with the two Zeal items, he actually has only one less movement speed than the Orianna with completed boots. Oh. So, you know, the two Zeal items are bad. Oh, but Lucida gonna flash on the j -Rar. chunks out so much of his health bar, j -Rar forced to flash. Hook landing onto the Psycho Boy, and allergic to dashing in. Redemption gonna come out, keep all of them alive, though. But now, this dragon is up in 5 seconds, it is a Cloud Drake, but the 4th Drake for the Shivana, just stacking that passive guy here, he gets knocked in and rooted up. Just gonna get out of that alive though, with the Flag and Drag, and that is a free dragon over the chase squad. Now basically it just looks like it's basically be a base race for them. Not so much a traditional one of, you know, who gets there first, but it's just going to be let's push out these lanes to this Baron buff, get as much as we can, and basically rinse and repeat, get the Baron again and push it in. Uh, you see there's not a whole lot they can do defending. Yeah. I don't know how fast they, how, who gets the towers first and how fast these guys get in. The Weaver's Wall comes in, separates the Lucida. Not much going to come of it. The Chaver trying to flank, get some damage down. But not too much else, Alusta gonna ult him. j -Rar gets destroyed by the Shivana and the Cataclysm. Flea Panda just getting knocked around. Also gonna go down, double kill for the Shivana. They're just gonna keep pushing in. That's two kills already. Five versus three. They might look to actually end this game right now. Big root coming out from Psycho Boy. Hook gonna go pretty wide there, but not much Team Force game can do to defend. Ultimate coming out. 
as I uh, not <laughs> happen, but the shutdown fish baby bot does leap in onto the Lucian. He finally goes down. Meanwhile, Guy Fieri is pushing this bot lane in him while all the top lane action is going on. Silent Taco does come down the answer, forces him to back off. Also, Moody though, well, nope. Danicus has got his back, and Fish Baby's just gotta leave that. Yeah, it was uh, Guy Fieri, like, literally in the middle of the fight. Guy Fieri was just like, you know what, screw this. I'm gonna teleport to the bot lane, ends up pushing down the tower, and getting, uh, about a quarter of HP into uh, the inhibitor, and so you know maybe they could have won that better if they had Guy Fieri there. But I mean, still that was an extra bonus tower that they got. They bought, got the top inhib, which you know I call that worth for Allergic to Milk's first death. Uh, and he ha and Allergic to Milk has now completed that Infinity Edge, and it doesn't look like he's gonna buy boots, guys. He built another long sword. It's gonna be a bootless uh, game for the Lucian. He might be, might be looking to complete that QSS into the Mercurial Scimitar. Who knows? But yeah, I I want to see. He, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen at this point. But I really want to see if he just never buys boots this entire game. Although 34 minutes in, hasn't bought them. He's not gonna buy them now. Guy here trying to steal away the blue buff. But J Road does secure it for himself though. So. <laughs> they were just in a bit of a weird spot, gonna just take the Weaver's Wall out of there, just saying, see you nerds. Also, thing to know, uh, Javar has now Flame Horizon Xanakis Muscus, <laughs> so oh there is that. Uh, Javar has died quite often though, so uh, he hasn't been able to put in as much work as Logic to Milk has, but it is always neat to always notice the horizons. Yeah. It does have the most... No, actually, no. Logic Milk has the most DS in this game at 276 now, but Guy Fieri, Elusa, they're getting this bot lane power. Silent Taco is just there to watch. Can't do anything else. Just free in him, and they're rotating back to mid now. Mm. And so, all Chase Blood has to do, they just have to wait. The... The minions will do the work, they will do the damage, and so they just have to wait until you know, one or two people go to clear the lane, and then they just uh, put pressure in the mid lane like they're doing just now, and it should be an easy inhibitor for them. Yep, that's all three inhibs. Guy Fieri gonna dive in, not hit the flag and drag. They're, they're just gonna look to disengage out of there. Shock Blast does land onto Alistar Moody, a little bit of poke. Not much else is gonna happen. Fling Panda does get hooked by Alistar Moody, gonna flay two in, throws out the Lantern, oh, goes to Elusa though. Knock up from Fling Panda, but Elusa is just going on to the chase. But in the meantime, Fling Panda gets Cataclysm, taken down by Elusa. He's on a rampage. Hook goes just a little wide. That's another kill over to Siobhan, who's now 10 and 3. And with Baron being up in about 15. Around, get that. Not that they really need it at this point, but might as well get it in this game. Yeah, just try to end it cleanly. Also, the Elder Dragon is up in a minute, so they might look to get both those buffs and then just make a clean push to end this game. Silent Taco is in the area, walks over Ward. They know he's here. They actually haven't started the Baron yet. They're beating the Silent Taco, gets destroyed. <laughs> And now they can start this Baron, no jungler to contest it. Uh, perfectly baited from J-Squad, sweep out all the visions. Silent Taco has the face check, gets destroyed. Baron Nasher, second one for J-Squad, and now they want to just go and end this game. Mm. Yeah, now the rest of... Oh, uh, there's, there is the surrender from Team Foreskin, GG. They knew it was done, and that is game one going towards Chase Squad. Oh my, that that was a game. Whew. Keeping up with our Lucian, that, that was indeed a no boot solution. He bought an elixir for his last item. Yep, finishes the Merc. I want to see. Oh my God, who who has what a game? Who? Oh, we we have a Sivan. Actually, actually, Jarar had the most damage in the game at 23k. Allergic Milk just behind them at 20k and Lucida at 18k. But 
here here for the I, I guess analyst analyst desk let's call it we have yeah, baby. the man himself Sivan How, how's what's it going? up guys but, it's going pretty well it's going pretty well uh, that was quite a game actually I started off uh, I thought it was going to be a pretty close one but things in bot lane got a little spicy and it ran too fast and uh, looks like JRAR and uh, Fish Baby couldn't keep up with the bot lane but from the from what I've noticed Throughout that game, it was it seemed to be a lot of bot-focused uh, plays, like a lot of Silent Taco heading down there and Elicita responding. And I think that's what actually turned that game around, was the, the counter ganks from El Elicita kind of stopping anything Silent Taco did bot lane. And that just turned over the game, and then you just had Allergic to Milk carry that pretty much along with Elicita to, for the whole game. Yeah, Yeah, I've... I did post the MVP poll in the chat, so please, please go and vote there. I, I am going to actually throw out my MVP vote to Elucida on the Shivana heat. Yes, allergic to milk was doing work in that mid game, but Elucida was cleaning up so many kills, had s such great early game pressure while keeping up his farm. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to give it to him, personally. But, yeah, I think I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have to almost agree with that for uh, for part of it. But I'm I'm gonna actually give my vote to Alistar Moody because oh. that entire game he was hitting I, every single time a play was started or a kill was picked off, it, even though it might have gone to Elucida or Allergic to Milk. Every single play was seemed to be started off with a perfect engage or a perfect hook, some great double man flays, and it was just a one. And even that uh, the double kill right before the first Baron where uh, he lanterns Lucian, who couldn't keep up, lantern him right to get that double kill, and that set up the entire Baron. I think it was just overall quite a game from him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll be back in just a moment. We're just going to stop stop the stream so each game can save as individual VODs, but we will be right back for game two of Team Foreskin and Chase Squad. But, yep, vote for MVP. We will be right back. <laughs> 